Yeah, I wanted to talk about something I learned today to do. Uh, apparently, we asked me to uh, use this application uh, on the web and to allow to play with a real uh, ski uh, training machine. Okay, so. Um, what we said to me is that I can use DNSPy to be able to modify the code and uh, that's what I did and I learned to do it and that's why I do this video. So if you want to hack mod a game, apparently you can use DNSPy. So what you do is that you come here, you say I want to open, pop, 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 here, you go in the project, you go in uh, the data part, the manager part, and then you have assembly C sharp here, and you add this stuff that will allow you to have the code of the Unity guy if he did not do plenty of package. So when you have the Unity the, the Unity code of the guy, you can uh, see all the code over there. So apparently, uh, you can steal code of people very easily <laughs> with DNSPy. I was impressed. So good to know. Uh, to protect your code if you want to protect your code, not to stall people. Um, and so when you are here, uh, what happened is that I found a code that is mainly using the motor of the player, and there is another one with the head to move the player, and I was like, mm, okay, I will put all my code here because I, I will make it dirty, but I will make it work. So as you can see here, um, you can edit, so you click here and you edit the class, like this, and uh, you can put some code here, uh, for example, uh, you, can, you can take that and put it here and put uh, hey, the, the object hey, and you find the, the object hey. When you do that, you just compile and ta-da, you add some code. You add some code to the code, current code, but not to the DLL, so when you want to add it to the DLL, you just save the module here, like this, up, and here I added the code to the Unity game we are currently um, hacking. So uh, yeah, so as you can see here, I did some uh, plenty of add. For example, you can create your class uh, like here, injection data, and uh, basically you just click here and you will do uh, add a class here, and you create your class. And you can see that I have something that is called injection data, where uh, I call the, the first time we call the instance here, it loads the file and says that it's it's okay, we loaded the file now. And in this file, as you can see, it says directory can directory to say go take near the executable the file that is called injection JSON. And uh, I convert it with some JSON here. As you can see, and that allow me to access uh, those data to parameter the, the game more easily, to be able to tweak the game from outside and relaunch it each time I want to tweak the game. So that's what one way to do it. The other way to do it uh, that I did not use in the final version of this, but I used in the start version, in the first version of it, is the UDP. So if you want, I will check if I have it. Yeah, it's not as easy as uh, Visual Studio in Unity, but yeah. Uh, I have another version here that I create that is Ski Trip on Calibration Left Right. Oh yeah, that, not the UDP part. This. So to be able to make a ski game, you have this curve and you have a controller that is fixed on the, the machine. And what happens is that when you do ski, you will do left, right, left, right. And so you have the left part and the right part and the top part. And so what you do is you do an application like this that allows you to uh, record uh, the left, the right, the top. When you have the left, the right, the top, what you want to do to be able to calibre is to say um, here, da -da -da -da. you want to find the cross product of uh, the left to, to, to the top and to the right to the top. So you have the line here and then you find the middle of uh, those two points. So you check the middle and you put the cross line and like this you have a new um, place to be able to measure your, your, your the point compared to the center. But to do that uh, in a 3D world it's a bit hard because it's over there in the right, wrong direction. So what you want to do is something like this. You want to take it and put it on a zero axis. 
So basically, it's what I do um, here. So what I do is that now that we have the cross product and the rotation, so at the center, we take all the point and we relocate it to a local point. And as it's local, now it's really easy. So what I do is that I take the left point and I divide the, the distance between here and here with the new point we have. And like this, you have the left and right persons. And also, if you want, you can have the, the frontal and the top. But for the moment, for this one, I just use left, right persons. And ta-da, that's how uh, I have the machine tracking. And what I just need to have is uh, the position of, um, of the point. And the position of the point is... Uh, calibration. Uh, t -t -t yeah, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the object character motor here. So as you can see here, uh, we have here a delegate that allows me to say, okay, when you calibrate all that, you uh, store the value in uh, this value. Uh, it's UDP last value because I was using UDP before. And that's all. And in the update, I will be able to say triple point and uh, put the, the point. So where is it? Yeah, here you see if I press F9, it's left. F10 is top. F11 is right. And here you can see that I set the, the point, the position of the, the current tracker with local position and local position is set uh, based on uh, here the whole local position so what happened is that I have the point of the controller but it's a point in the game and so it's a world position but you what you want is a local position to be able to compare from that from something and so what I do is that I get I use the root of the player so uh, the feet and the controller and I compare them and I create a new local position based on that. So based on where is the ski and where is the controller. And like this I have a point that I can send to the other one and he will try to do his own local position to understand that. That's what happened here. Yeah. And so how I fetch all those data is by capturing them. So apparently we know that in the scene something is called controller left and controller right. So that's how we can remove the controller. Uh, and we can do the same with camera eyes, controller left and stuff like this. So you really need to try to understand the scene of the guy to be able to fetch that or to extract the old project with another tool that is called TNIC or something that extract the asset of the project to be able to understand how he coded the stuff to be able to hack it like you want. So, but basically, yeah, as you can see that as simple as that, apparently you just go in the DLL, you modify, you try to inject what you want and you uh, overwrite the stuff. So yeah, here for example, I did not have something to be able to debug. So I added a cube by creating a primitive cube that I associated to the gamma transform and I modify it just to be able to check if my value is, is well received in the game because you don't have the Unity inspector now so you need to find ways to be able to see if your data is right. Here I'm removing the left and right by just disabling the rendering. Um, I have something that's used his code. The problem is when you do that is that you cannot modify everything because the code of the guy can bug and so you need to use what he did even if it's ugly and you're like oh. so it's really not a good way to do uh, modding it's not uh, my favorite part of, of no <laughs> I don't like to do this but I had to do this so yeah basically here is what you can do with the NSPY this, uh, this tool over there uh, it's on GitHub, it's free, so you just go on GitHub and download it. Uh, for example, up, um, spy GitHub, here, da -da -da -da. all the code is over there, and what you want to do is go here in release, and download uh, the last release 
for your platform and you will have this uh, DNS, DN spy and that allow you to modify the DLL. What can I say? Um, here for the application, what I did mainly is that you have uh, the uh, horizontal axis. So we, he had something that, mod that modified the force. So I did the same. Uh, I just remove his value, value and put mine. And here you have inject single data that allow the user to configure it. So because I'm not uh, the, the guy who will use the application uh, may want to go faster, uh, a bit more on the left, a bit more on the right, stuff like this. So that's the user configuration. I just injecting that where the code of the other guy is working. So yeah. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit blurry uh, the, the way I'm describing that, but yeah, it's just injecting data, what I did here. So there is, there is something that push forward and something that translate left to right. Not my decision, the decision of the guy who did the game. And here uh, on disable and on destroy, you need to save the data file because uh, you want to be able to modify in the game and to... Uh, um, reload with the modified data. And that's how we do a relocation if you never knew. So feel free to copy this code, it's useful. Remove rendering, that's how I do it. I'm doing it. So I'm just saying, hey, uh, can you give me uh, for this object all the component renderer and I'm disabling to not see the hand. Remove the fence. It's uh, basically what you did, what you do is that. You save in a file the name of all the game objects in the scene. Then you try to understand which game object could be uh, the object you want to remove. Here, apparently, it was Fence and Waylon because it's a Chinese game. And uh, you say, okay, give me all the objects, find all the objects that have uh, this word in it, and then you just remove them. And you do that every then and then to be able to remove it before it's in front of the player, but yeah. So yeah, that was the code. Uh, it was just to have a reminder of uh, what is what and what is doing what. Uh, for example, restart here, it just restart the current scene. And so yeah, uh, another stuff I did is the UDP and the uh, text. So I'll try to do the text one. And so for the text one, I try to add some text to the game, and apparently you can, but it's not displaying on the main screen, so it was useless for me, so I removed it. But basically, you create a game object, you say it's a, ca uh, a canvas, like this. You modify the mode if you want to have it on overlayer if it's not a real game, and if it's a real game, you put it in, you, you let it in world. You modify uh, his parents, you add a panel for uh, the text. Then you add the script for the text uh, of uh, over somewhere here, I suppose. Yeah, here you put a, poly a character poly a police a font because else it's not working, and then you modify and you have uh, the timer in your game. So that's a way one way to do it to inject a timer in the game. Uh, and the UDP part is interesting, so I'll just check that with you before I stop this video. So the first version I did to, uh, to be able to control the game was uh, this. So you create... I um, don't oh know, it's not the UDP one. Do I have the UDP one here? Uh, I don't have the UDP one, I think. Okay, subject for another video. If you want, you can do a UDP that allows you to modify the value, and like this, you don't have to uh, twiggle around in DNS spy all the time. You just inject with DNS and with DNS spy and modify in your in your Unity editor uh, as you want. You have a bit of latency, but that's yeah, that's, uh, that's the game. On that, uh, I hope it's useful to someone to know how to use DNS spy. So just modify up, modify method of the class, you modify your code, you compile, you go to file here, you save the module and you go play the game. So have a good day, may the code be with you, see you in the next video. Bye!